Joshua Peterson with Peterson Electric. Wanted to talk to you today about grounding on your branch circuits. People say, well, what is a branch circuit? Real simple. If you have a tree in your front yard, that's your trunk line. That trunk line is going to be your main service power coming into the home. That's the service feed. If you have a, a big branch coming off of there, that is going to be a sub feed, which may be feeding a sub panel in your garage or downstairs in the basement, or you have three or four sub panels or just one. If you have branch circuits in your home, which typically you would with power, light, and heat, you're going to have wires coming down like this. These are branch circuits. Now, these circuits serve different things. For example, this white one right here is just 120 volts. It does my lighting. These black ones coming down, which is a 1980s style home, if you, it's now a yellow color jacket, but it's a 12-2 Romex NM non-metallic jacket conductor cable system. This right here is going to be 240 volts. And at 240 volts, the difference between these two guys is just the potential of the voltage. But what I want to talk to you about grounding is he, here's a metal box and right here's a fiberglass box. But here's the interesting thing. We've got a metal faceplate and over here when I put this one back on, it'll be a plastic faceplate. When you ground a device, it's very important that you understand that these screws right here on a toggle plate are bonding to the yoke of the switch, which then should be carried by your grounding conductor through the cable jacket. So when people call me for a home in 1910 with knob and tube, or they call me the home that has the old uh, gray style NM cable, which is a cloth style, it kind of looks like scales on a fish, um, they don't have inside of that system a ground wire. And when you don't have a ground wire in the jacket, you're not taking that back to the panel. So this is a perfect example of a cement floor and a dryer and a washer sitting on here. This purpose is 120 volts to wash your clothes. This is 240 volts to heat your clothes. This right here is 240 volts to heat the temperature of the room. This is 120 volts to give you light. If none of this had any branch circuit grounding, which is a potential going back to the panel to protect you, if this motor went out, or this motor, or this element, or this baseboard element went out, and that voltage could be picked up because you have bare feet and no rubber soles, you could potentially, the earth, this cement, be a perfect ground for you. And the danger of that is that you could get killed fairly, fairly quickly. So when people say, hey, Joshua, I don't have any grounds in my outlets and my lights and my switches, what do I do? Well, Article 250.122 talks about the grounding. You can either A, rewire your house, or B, possibly add some grounding that would help your outlets with some... Um, wire mold surface mounted on on the drywall. Um, but basically the best way to do this is to rewire your home which would be pulling drywall, getting your permit, making sure that all your branch circuits are completely rewired. And this this house right here actually has grounding. So I know that this face plate, I know that this metal box, and, and I know that these metal screws all go back to the same potential at the panel which an example over here would be right here tied to your grounding electroconductor to your cold water, for example, in a home. That is what keeps you from having the equal potential of getting electrocuted. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you next week.